Thursday, Thursday morning. I had a coffee courtesy of Anne and Laurie in the house just above the campsite. Coffee and biscuits, delicious coffee. How kind of them. Uh, really, you know, to be so welcoming to a stranger who happened to be camping in the field beyond their house. And they invited me up to the terrace yesterday for a beer. And uh, they're clearly so appreciative and grateful for what they have, uh, which is a beautiful house. And this morning I'm now cycling along the River Tay, um, looking for any signs that there might be beaver in the vicinity. It'd be great to see one. I suppose I might see a dam or two. Here's some ladies ahead who are walk jogging. I'll just get past them first. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> It's a beautiful river, the Tay. So today I'm off to Pit Lochry and then beyond, I think, going to Blair Athol. Uh, again, I had no idea where I'm going to be camping, but that's the, uh, that's the joy of it. So along the River Tay, lots of beautiful vegetation the sides of the road, brambles that aren't ripe yet, raspberries that are very ripe for the picking, ferns, oak and willow by the tree, by the uh, riverside, pine, very rich farmland as well. Beautiful day. little windy back roads just about to drop down into Pitlochry I think uh, it's very hilly at this point um, muggy day as well I think the route the Sustrans follows uh, is all these old roads and it must be a bit like the kind of roads that my great aunt Jenny rode back in the 1930s and so many houses along here are very well appointed uh, and it's as though a lot of the people with wealth and good sense in Scotland decided to build a house off the beaten track in beautiful countryside rather than in the kind of convenient thoroughfares so I'm not really cycling up the high hills um, I've got a gear cable a spare and I've also got a spare chain and a chain link remover with me and I know pretty well how to use them but I don't want to tempt fate by putting strain on the chain so I'm just uh, just being careful <laughs> Thursday evening and I'm sitting at the very top of the Falls of Brewer on a flat area with maybe four or five or six tall pine trees, <clears throat> lots of needles on the ground and roots sticking out of the earth. A flat area, slab, leads down to deep pools and then torrential waterfalls very, very impressive. It's like the Burks of Aberfeldy. And in the Cairngorms, I suppose, more or less, very, very close on the cusp. And I think it is true that the whole journey really has been me cycling from home to the Cairngorms. And all these other places have been kind of milestones en route. Because <clears throat> that's where I want to be. Uh, in this kind of environment with tall pine trees and the smell of pine resin in the air, blueberry bushes, birch, 
it's lovely and I've been so lucky with the weather again it's very very nice today and I suppose I'm more than halfway now uh, tomorrow I'm going to go up the Dranochter Pass Dranochter Pass and end up somewhere quite near Newton Moor so that's one more night wild camping in that kind of area the following day and Saturday when it's going to rain apparently will be my B&B and hot shower and then a couple of nights I'm hoping in the Cairngorms, maybe near Glenfeshi and also perhaps around Loch Morlich. Just spending days there, just sampling the sounds, making music, taking photographs, writing my impressions down in the journal, and gradually then uh, cycling north up to um, Inverness for Wednesday. So it feels good. I think the first day... Now, just coming up to this little plateau area, I really get a sense of John Muir and his love, and his love for nature in this almost religious, in fact, indeed, religious sense, tuning into nature and it giving him that deep, deep sense of peace and connection with everything. So I'm very grateful for that. It's lovely.